Hey everybody, Texas Truck here, Lance's performer shop alone, Star Mopars.com. Mopar Monday here, about 9.07 p.m. from the land of rain. <laughs> and, uh, starting to not know where I live, it hasn't been dusty in so long, but uh, what we have here is kind of a follow-up continuation of uh, our HJE tool haul, and uh, we're going to get going here. I'm not sure what order I'll release the videos, so this is either a teaser or a... Uh, spoiler of sorts but uh what we did we brought in of course i picked to go uh, right grip 2.0 full polished for some work wrenches and ultimately what i had to do curiosity of course ensues and i'm like man you know dude i went with full polish but i wonder what their satin finish is like i wonder what their you know when it's new <laughs> i wonder what the black is like and that's where these come in of course this we've already introduced but these two uh, i'll go ahead and cover them here as well it might take me a little while. The black, it's going to be like your mid-price point, if you will. Part number 1118WR. Uh, sorry, 31116WR. Uh, 1149. Um, this satin one was supposed to be a 916, but they shipped a half inch. They priced exactly the same, so it's not like a huge loss or egregious mistake. Plan was to have an extra half and an extra 916 since I use them a lot. Obviously, that ship has sailed, but I don't really mind because, for the sake of a comparison video, it's just better if you have the exact same item. Uh, so, that price would be uh, the 1118 WR. In this case, since it's half inch, it would be 1116. And, like I said, the price was the same, at least when I purchased. So, basically, you've seen the full polished one. Uh, in our early haul, and then these are two new items here. Happen to be both half inch, even though it was supposed to be half inch and nine sixteenths, but whatever. <laughs> Worked great for the comparison video that you've seen or you're about to see. And then, since we're on the topic of wrenches, I'm going to go ahead and throw this guy down. Now, they do some funky stuff here. This is not like a typical double offset that I've ever used their <laughs> double offsets they usually have like a deep offset right significant angle if you will and where this one comes in it's going to be their part number uh 51618 uh wr is going to be specific for hga that's just the way they denote right 2271 is not a terrible price you know for an offset wrench you know american made very very thick beam there this is in the satin finish and it of course you might have guessed it, a half by 9 16 Why? Because I just use it all the time. Uh, speaking of use, I want to highlight this. It has been used just once. Well, I say once. It was like one particular job. So it was probably, I don't know, 20-ish <laughs> fasteners or so. If I can get a good angle, I guess it was the 9 16 I must have used. Kind of zoom in there. This will just give you a comparison for wear. Again, this is very, very early, like rookie season for this wrench still. But if I spin it, you'll see some red. Yeah, that's like I say, I get red on everything. So that's red paint in there. But if you can compare it to what you see here, this side didn't touch a single fashioner. Everything that day was 3 8 hardware, so no 5 16 were used in the making of that <laughs> uh, teardown. What's weird to me is the angles here. I'm going to back out just a little bit. To me, it looks like this side, the 9 16 is a deeper offset than the half. Okay. Uh, I don't have a way to measure that accurately, but like it's pretty significant, in my opinion. If I come in here and take this socket, that's going to roll off, right? This side, obviously, is going to do the same thing, but it's just the degree right here this this distance from the straight line to the straight line of the head there's way more going on here than there is on this side i don't know if that's a consistent thing like if i had a 7 16 by half you know if the 7 16 would just mirror this and the half would go way out i don't know if this is like an odd duck <laughs> maybe it's just like playing tricks on my eyes i don't think it is but uh yeah, it, uh, I wanted to try that. Just like with these, you know, I picked full polished, but I was still a curiosity. And the fact I couldn't find anyone compares, comparing the three finishes. With that, before I commit to a set of some specialty wrench, if possible, I want to either have it in hand, say, you know, an in-store type of a situation, or get one. 
Uh, that's why I'm often leery of like stuff in a set. You know, if I'm like gonna buy it for the first time, it's like, yeah, I don't know. Uh, so I get something that I will use, you know, frequently use sizes. That's kind of my guinea pig. Then if it's cheaper to buy the set, I'll just wind up with a double wrench of something that I'll actually use, or I can take one, make some like weird off, <laughs> uh, one off type of a set of just leftover stuff. But uh, I don't hate them. They're just definitely not what I was accustomed to. I think it's a fantastic wrench. Uh, it's very, very beefy, uh, which again, could be a good thing, could be a bad thing, kind of depends where you are and what you're doing, but 12-point uh, box end, nothing bad to say so far, again, just one simple job is all I've gotten to do with it, and uh, believe it or not, that will wrap up the right stuff, not the whole video, just the right stuff that we have, so... Uh, we're gonna get in now to kind of kind of some crazier things and I guess we'll like slowly ratchet up the crazy <laughs> so, We're gonna get started here with some familiar sites And this is kind of unique for me. I'll tell you why here in a second, but I'm gonna throw down this item and this item now what we're looking at obviously two items from Knipex we've obviously got their two component handle and then the classic uh, textured dip over there if I can find the part number I'm gonna spin her around uh, this is going to be 7402 200 this is a serious side cutter right <laughs> and, uh, 200 what does that equate to that's millimeters so we're just gonna call it 8 inch basically and 2750 you'll note if you you know purchase these recently or have them on a wish list or something you'll be like ah, that seems pretty cheap for those yeah some sort of a closeout deal don't ask me i'm not hge but uh the 2750 i could not pass that up those will be going to work obviously we already have a set of raptors and if i can find them on this set um 87 41 250 2750 as well I'm not gonna lie, uh, I bought these here personally. If I hold them like this, it looks like the end of an open-end wrench, right? Uh, I got them kind of for some weird stuff like tie rod ends and things. They're designed technically to like kind of break seized fasteners. I have tried, uh, particularly with O2 sensors, <laughs> and I have failed. Um, I think with things that maybe weren't as egregiously frozen, uh, essentially almost like welded threads, they'd probably work but when i've actually like tried to you know bust something free i've not been able to do it i do like that they kind of stay in place because i mean i've i've had to do some crazy positions here and uh what i wind up having better luck with is a channel lock nut buster believe it or not <laughs> and, uh, i do think there are going to be situations where this will come in like handy especially weird I'm thinking of like occluded bolts and stuff that I have to deal with. I can think of a situation about six o'clock tonight uh, where these would have been nice to have with me. But uh, it was just, again, it was the price point that was super low. It's almost like a tool of the day price uh, via the closeout here. So I thought, you know what? I don't have rafters at work. I'm going to pull the trigger. So we did. But what is unique about both of these items? What, what sets these apart? from my other Knipex purchases, which we've had quite a few of over the last several years. It's that they're in like retail, this is almost like you walk into a big box store, your local electrician place, right? And boom, they're hanging on a shelf. Typically, you know, when we get stuff from KC Tools, it's like in a bag or a box type of a thing, sort of more like uh, probably, you know, native <laughs> packaging. These are sort of more of a retail deal, especially you can tell because it's designed to not be stolen, which is a problem over here. And uh, yeah, so kind of cool. It gives you a little bit. You can see that they highlight the push button. It gives you the minimum and a the maximum there, which oddly enough has no values, which <laughs> like, uh, if they wanted to say, you know, like quarter to, you know, three quarter or, you know, give the openings there, but it's just minimum and maximum. I guess if you have a nut with you, you can maybe drop it on the paper. Uh, here in the back, they're going to call it 1032 7 16 inch and a quarter. So I'm not sure why that information is not on the front. It seems like that would be the place to put it. But hey, it is what it is. And right here, again, eight inches for 27 bucks. Sign me up. 25% they claim. It'll cut piano wire. Uh, again, to me, aviation cable. There's your specs, which that's 
pretty cool. It's almost like having a catalog page with the tool, which I know that's really not special, but when you're just used to getting everything Kinepex you've ever purchased, like in a bag or a box with nothing, it is cool to see what they would do with like a retail display. And if you're curious, absolutely not do I walk into a big box store and purchase these when we've got Casey Tool at our disposal. So, moving on from there, things get uh, a little bit more obscure, shall we say. <laughs> and, uh, in a good way, I think you'll like this stuff. Let me set this down. I uh, should have prepared for this a little bit better, but I wound up getting stuck at work yet again. So. Uh, I'm going to go with, I guess, the most modern of this, which this would be very modern, very new. I can uh, pull this off. <laughs> Throw both of these down for you to look at. What's challenging is not necessarily extracting these two items, it's keeping everything else in the bag from coming out. So. What we have here is going to be from Malco, and uh, if I set these right in front of the camera for you, this is what we're looking at. I have one of these little stupid things for a long, long time. And this is kind of my first chance to actually bring them in. So what are we looking at? What are we dealing with? These are going to be, respectively, if I can track them down, they're probably on first page, maybe? <laughs> I kind of wish this went uh, alphabetically. But yeah, they're here under 2 and 5 eighths, which is important because that's the length. What these are is they're, they're uh, CR hex, I'm not sure how you'd pull out, I guess it's like cleanable, reversible hex driver, right? And they're magnetic, that's the big deal. Uh, essentially, we've got this one, red and yellow, I think electrical colors that you probably never learn. Quarter and five sixteenths, and then over here, you see yellow again, and you're like, hmm, five sixteenths? Correct, because blue would be three eighths in this instance, so... Oddly enough, um, they're not priced that bad if these last. Obviously, I don't have experience with them. It seems like people have enjoyed them. Uh, Malco often has like HVAC stuff uh, that they kind of target as one of their markets. Eight sixty for the little guy, nine fifteen for the big one. I thought that seemed like a fair price. Now, what's going to set these apart? Uh, here, as I flip it over, you can see that you've got your size markings, and you're like, oh, it's upside down. It's going to drive me crazy. Well, yeah, it's a situation where you rip it off. And, uh, it was a little bit more stubborn than I thought it would be, but uh, basically this is where the magic happens. We'll just showcase the little guy for a change instead of going to the big one. So if you look at this, this is 2 and 5 eighths is the overall length, and then you've got kind of that ball detent and it's sort of placed weirdly, kind of offset from the midpoint. That's because of this socket. If you note right here, red band quarter, yellow band 5 sixteenths, and then right there, though, is a magnet. How do we know? Hopefully that's not... Okay, that's not stainless. So much of what I have is stainless. I'm going to always... You have to stop and think. Boom. That's going to hold the fastener, right? So we come in, and you know what? We're just going to go this route, rip the 3 8 off. <laughs> and, uh, why do I want to rip the 3 8 off? Because I need it for this. If we have this in the socket, which as you can see, it's the correct size, it's going to drop out. Now, why did it drop out? Because it doesn't have a magnet holding it. If we take this little thing and we jam it back together, don't pinch our lab. This is my literal first time playing with these. So. Right there, that's why we want those. <laughs> All right, going down in a panel, going down on a pa anything, right? Uh, this is going to keep the fastener. It becomes a one-hand job instead of a two-hand job. And that is all we need to know right there. So, sub $10 for each one. Seemed like a good pickup. I'm excited to try these out. If you're thinking, like, man, that would be really cool, you know? Like, I wish they had, like, 7 sixteenths and half. I did, too. <laughs> and uh, they may make them but I have not seen them, and uh, I don't know if they're like planning to expand on this line. Again, I think these are kind of intended more or less for like sheet metal work. I'll use them for that a little bit, but uh, truth be told, way more for other things. So uh, the cool thing, of course, though, it's just impact ready. You just slide it in, and you're ready to go to town. Um, can we... Let's see if this is identical or not, because again, I don't know. I'm thinking they would have had to have bushed it out which would keep us from doing nefarious things like I wanted. Clearly a much larger shaft on that one. So case in point, if I take the quarter five sixteenths, it ain't happening. Actually, 
no, it's not happening. I thought maybe we could slide that down a little. And then same thing here. The big size is 5 16 and 3 8 free freeform spinning. So no go on that front. But uh, I would not at all mind having like 7 16 and half and a half 9 16 Beyond that, I don't know if it would be necessary, but I do think there would be a market for that. Now, if you're curious, if you're super like, oh man, you know, I'd never seen these before, that's super cool. I want to say there's a shorter version, and I want, I know there's a longer version, so uh, might be a couple of sizes above. Don't hold me to that, but uh, just check them out again. Malco C R H E X, that's cleanable, replaceable magnetic hex drivers. So I uh, felt like they were a good pickup, and again, HD had them in stock, so we pulled the trigger. Multiple times I've tried to buy these from vendors that have them, and they're just not in stock, so I don't purchase them. Stars aligned, and it happened. <laughs> so, what do we want to do next? What's, what's in our bag of tricks here? I guess we'll go probably second oldest. And uh, this is going to be something I really wish, like, there were more sizes available. I understand why there's not. I've got to find the price point here, which might take me a while. Uh, this sucker, I think, is well worth the money, and I'll tell you why here shortly. It's going to be part number TU16. This is a half-inch, 12-point, 3H drive swivel socket. These things are glorious. This is from Bonnie. <laughs> so we're going old school Americana here. And let me tell you a few things about this little Bonnie socket. Now, this one obviously is in pretty good shape. Should just be new old stock type of deal, probably from some place went out of business. Uh, HDE comes along, picks them up. If you're curious, like, what's TU16? They literally have that stamped on the side. Uh, there's the Bonnie. You've got the uh, A and a half inch. And again, it's a little dirty. That's to be expected for as old as these are. This side's really loose. This side is really tight, probably from all that dirt and grit. <laughs> but I want you to pay attention to two things. Number one, 12 point. Number two, look how thin that sidewall is, okay? At work, and I've got these pictures and I don't ever post them. I probably need to do, I haven't been on Instagram in like five weeks now, so my apologies to whoever <laughs> he has messaged me or something. Or tagged me in crud. I it, it's not happening. Too busy. Um, but what I can tell you, several of these are at work. As are East Coast. There might be a KD. Uh, we're talking half a nine sixteenths, three H drive, chromies. Uh, and then there's, jeez, two intact snap-ons and one that just <laughs> is gone and uh, what we do with these there is literally uh, six bolts you know on certain applications where you've got to have a swivel and it's got to be thin wall I think the snap-on I don't know when they started selling thin wall but like it is insanely thin so I'm thinking it's like a specialty purchase type of deal and we probably just like snagged a bunch of them um, but these are used for better or for worse because you can't get this thin with an impact socket I've ever seen they're used on an air ratchet now. A lot of an impacting air ratchet, so it's kind of okay, but like the sidewalls and the snap-ons, good lord. <laughs> Every time I use that thing, I kind of get a little bit sketchy because one of them is getting to be really deep. They're both like stress fractured all the way down, you know, on the drive end. One of them is starting to be more like a valley, right? Like the creek has expanded a bit too much. <laughs> And uh, I know it's going to go one of these days, but uh, that's where this comes in. Now, sadly, uh, I can use this, but the 9 16 man, that would have just, I'd, Lord, I'd buy a ton of those, uh, especially at the price point of 10 bucks. That's kind of an insane deal. I don't care if it's old. That means it's good. I have personal experience with these. And again, is it the greatest mechanism in the history of the world? Is the most articulate, the most robust? Probably not, but it's pretty dadgum good. And you're not going to beat 10 bucks. So, as a little Bonnie, uh, Jewel Force. Don't have a clue how far back that would go. It looks pretty good. I might, I don't know, maybe 70s? I don't know. Uh, I'm not sure how you would date code these or anything. But, uh, fantastic little things. The only complaint would be right there. I wish it was chamfered on the drive in. But hey, this is what it is. You wear them out pretty quick. <laughs> with a pneumatic ratchet anyway but so uh, this is actually for me but i might take it to work just kind of depends again so so wish maybe i don't know some place you know some 
employee like hauled off all this stuff, bought it from his boss. Maybe he's got a giant crate of 916s or full sets. If HG finds them, I will buy them. <laughs> because again, uh, personal experience with them, and it's just it's one of those things. It's such a thin wall, but it's durable. Uh, I know because it wouldn't still be at work, not cracked if it wasn't. So that was pretty cool. This stuff is really cool to me. It may not be as cool to the vast majority of you, right? There might be a couple of you. I don't know. Randy might appreciate them. Uh, a couple of other people with similar interests. Not going to give it away too terribly bad here. But uh, I was just like, I found these and I was like, no way. <laughs> and, uh, pulled the trigger and then uh, something happened. An email was shot off and then I just went ahead. And I was like, hey, you know, I'm, I'm going to ask a question here. So... Uh, these are untouched, uncleaned up by yours truly. They're just as delivered. And what we have is two sockets. And you're like, oh, are they swivel two, six point? You know, is this just a six point Bonnie team? What's going on? Nope. You're going to see here. <laughs> One of them is chamfered like I like. The other is just square. I'm going to try to get the prices now before we go into what I like about these. Uh, where is it going to be? kind of hard to find this on the packing list but at least they include one and I get prices so we're gonna have one that uh, they call it like a stub 12 and a reg 12 I'm not quite sure the difference both of them are eight dollars 3 8 drive half inch all right it's gonna be your drive size or I should say fastener size uh, if we look down the barrel here, you'll note that one of them is like a way fatter sidewall than the other. And uh, again, fat sidewall, chamfered, thin sidewall, straight. But here's what makes these special. I've got to flip them over, which again, not my preferred orientation for socket branding. But do you see what I see? You're seeing USA and some of you are like, what? <laughs> yeah. Pull that back a little bit for you. That says Mopar. Right, so these were branded specifically for Mopar. Uh, I think it was Jory that I was talking to by email, and I said, like, hey, any idea who the uh, OEM was on these? I want to say he thought it would be right, which this one, in my opinion, does look very, very rightish. This one, based on what I've seen and used, which is a bad example because it's not in great condition, the ones I use, that almost looks Armstrong. Um, I don't know. If you know, let me know. But uh, And it very well could both be right, could both be Armstrong. You know, they were just making an educated guess as well. They probably know way better than me. <laughs> but uh, I will say this one here has a way bigger stamping. And if you go back to what we know with right, they're really good about their stamping. However, both seem small. Now, this one's significantly larger than the other. Um, USA, half inch. Mopar, USA, I mean, I don't know. But, dadgum, I love them. Uh, they're super, super cool. This is a deal. If you're like, oh, you should have bought a set. You know, why didn't you get like three-eighths to three-quarter of them? You know, you're the Mopar guy. I totally would, especially at eight bucks. <laughs> These were available. Problem is, this is all they have. They got quite a few of the half-inchers, which, you know, yes, I will absolutely use. Uh, that's a good thing. It's not like some oddball size or something that I won't ever get to put on a ratchet. But these are just super cool. Uh, you could do weird things with these. You could make necklaces, right? <laughs> Maybe you're going to the car show and you need a little bit more bling, try to get some votes from people. Uh, you could you put them as, like, goodie bag giveaways, prizes, um, gifts, you know, like white elephant stuff. Like, this would be super cool to get. Yeah. Everyone that gets it's probably going to hate it, but you know, hey, every once in a while it lines up just right and you're the coolest gift giver ever. But uh, just super, super cool uh, to see a Mopar brand and socket. Now, I know, because uh, I buy some, I've never actually made videos on a lot of this stuff, but they're a car company, right? Chrysler, Dodge, Plymouth, you know, FCA, Stellantis, whatever, and Timler Chrysler. Uh, there's going to be specialty tools they need made for their product, whether it's like ball joint sockets or weird one-off things that no one else makes. Several manufacturers come in and do that. But with something basic like hand tools, that's not something you see as often, right? Uh, a lot of times you'll find these items, and it's sort of like, let's say that we're 
you watching this video and me are technicians at the dealership in the 1960s. And we jump through these hoops and the boss man tells us, hey, if you guys go to this training and, you know, learn the lean burn ignition system or whatever, you know, we're going to... We're going to take care of you and promote you. And so we go, and we get there, and we learn, and whatever, and we pass a little exam, and then guess what? There's like a little gift, you know, when you finish it. Or you reach, you know, like a certain level in your advancements, you know, internally, and they kind of reward you, you know, whether it's like a local, regional, or like national level type of a thing. And some of the stuff is like super cool, and I assume, you know, it's either retired people offloading it for money, or most likely... Uh, those people passed away and you know, like family put it in a garage sale or something and somebody bought it and throws it on eBay. It's a likely scenario. Uh, sad to say, but uh, some of this stuff is like well used. Some of it's like mint and never opened. You can kind of get a feel like this technician was like, I'm using that crud, <laughs> you know, or I don't care about this stupid set. I'm going to use it and keep my, you know, tools I like in good shape. And then other people are like, well, that's really cool. You know, I'm, I'm going to set this aside, you know, have it in my box, but you know, just kind of have it there as a conversation piece. And uh, you can find some really neat stuff. So uh, I assume this could have been like a bigger scale. Like here recently, I bought a little tool. It's like a specialty 10 millimeter. It's essentially a 10 millimeter nut driver. But the handle has got the shaker logo on it, right? Because it was designed and sold when you purchase a shaker, right? So when somebody comes in and they're like, hey, you know, I'm put my shaker together. It's like, you should have that in the box. Sometimes I, they might have cut out doing that. I don't know. But... I've got the shaker nut driver. Would a regular 10 millimeter nut driver work? Absolutely. Would a 10 millimeter socket or wrench do it? Yep. But there is technically a dedicated tool. Uh, so that's sort of where I think these might have fallen. I don't think they would have been part of those sets because of the quantities HJE had. I think this is just like surplus from somewhere. So why half? I don't know. Man, I wish there was just like even 7 16 and 9 16 will do a lot of things on an old car. Uh, if we could just get those three together. <laughs> so, uh, I'm going to keep looking. In my email, I said, hey, if you find that stuff, let me know. Um, super, super cool. And now, if that, like I said, oh, most of you are probably like, oh, this is way cooler than those. For the Mopar people, that's, ooh, you know, cool stuff. But we have one more item. Well, actually, there's two. Mm. Let's, uh, let's save the time warp here, and we're going to go with this, which is kind of a time warp, too. This item is going to come... Man, there's actually three items. Good lord. Uh, scratch it. We're going to go to the new stuff. Won't spend a ton of time on this. We're about to the 30-minute mark anyway. Um, from Ling for $12.85. We have part number 853062ST. Again, $12.85. We're not getting ripped off on this. What is this? Does it look like pocket pry bars? Well, that's exactly what it is. Lang themselves call them pry bars, and that's because these are not screwdrivers. These aren't those cheap little things that you're going to bend up. These are actually designed to be utilized as a pry bar. That was my first time having them out of the packaging in hand, which is why I didn't know they were oily. <laughs> but uh, there you got standalone part numbers, as you can see, made in the USA. Cool thing about these for people like myself and Randy, who I referenced for the sockets there, it's orange, right? Randy's in orange, you know, old school Mopar muscle cars. Go Mango, Hemi Orange, what have we here? <laughs> so the other thing that is a perk on these, when you have an offset, that's great for prying. I mean, absolutely fantastic. But the problem is a lot of times this pin clip, when it's integrated like this, you know, if it's adjustable and you can put it wherever, that's fine. But so many times this is oriented and it lines up with the shaft. 95% of the time, that's great. Like, it bothers me when a screwdriver doesn't line up correctly. You know, like, you've got the font and the tip. Is, it just drives me crazy. This, though, check it out. This is not. It lines up with the shaft, but not with the offset. And that's because you can actually put this in your pocket without either A, stabbing yourself, or B, tearing a hole in your pocket. <laughs> so, whether that was designed that way, or somebody got the prototypes and realized there was an egregious mistake, Lang got it right. This one right here is straight, so obviously it doesn't matter too much. Uh, they are very oily, which again will prevent rust, but it kind of makes them glare in the camera. I think I'm going to keep these at the house. I do kind of like these, so I might go ahead and buy a set to take to work. Why would I like orange at work? Well, stands out. So. 
if I drop these down and they go through a pallet and I forget that I dropped them and then I pick up the pallet and I drive over it with the forklift or something, you know, not running it over but passing by, I'll probably see it on my way back in. Went ahead and timed that out. We were a few seconds away, so I did it manually. But uh, that's honestly the selling point of this. When you see me get like oranges and greens and blues and stuff, a lot of times that really is just for visibility, sometimes like a color preference. But let's face it, if these things were black handled, stealth, discreet, not as noticeable, you know, like if you walk in, you know, go grab yourself lunch, you know, you don't want to be that guy with neon crud hanging out of your pocket, maybe. Might prefer black in that scenario. But realistically, for me, these get left behind. Maybe I'm like doing something on a wire spool and it's like, good lord, where's my other pry bar? I can go back and it's easier to find when it's a standout color. So, now if everything you work on is orange, it could be a problem. But, uh, for most people, that's not the case and these will stick out like a sore thumb, which is a good thing because then you won't have to purchase them because you've lost them. So, moving on, I'm wondering if we need to... Hmm. We have hit 30 minutes here. Uh, the diehards enjoy the longer things. Uh, everyone else is like ready for three to four minute videos. <laughs> and, uh, I can't operate like that. I do have some stuff that was not sent with this. Uh, should be coming soon, I would hope. It's been a while. Um, should we hold off and showcase this with those items? Maybe we will. Maybe we should do that. But you know, I built this one up. So the item I forgot about, I'm not gonna not gonna showcase, but I'm gonna go ahead and do you a solid. This is for the diehard viewers here. We're gonna throw this one in. And uh, good lord, it is uh it is a sight to behold. Plus there's some stuff I wanna do to it. <laughs> so uh what we had, now the other thing I've already used, so yeah, it's, it's not a big deal. This is $24.95, which I believe is an absolute steal. Um, it comes from Armstrong. Like I told you, we're going to get older. HJE estimates that this glorious piece of machinery would have come from the World War II era. Uh, it's going to be part number S40, made in the USA. High tinsel is all that I can see on the shaft. And what shaft, you ask? This shaft. The shaft of a half-inch drive breaker bar. Well, there's what remains of the chrome finish, right? Kind of aged and tarnished is all. Probably like sitting in a crate with tons of other ones, realistically, talking military supplies, you know. The knurling is immaculate. I know it's filthy. Yes, it's filthy as well, but the knurling is so good. It's one of those things that's noticeable, but it's not going to like cut your hand. It's like perfect for a barbell, <laughs> right? Uh, this is kind of like you get your new bar in and you're like, ooh, that knurling looks good. And then you go grab it and it's like, disappointingly not present right you know for as deep as it looked this is just a really good feel i've got some old proto breaker bars with similar styled handles if i spin this around you can see it was kind of swanky sort of has that like polished end cap <laughs> so i don't think my protos do uh she's a little crusty but man look at that articulation or something that probably you know dates back to the 1940s that's really good now, granted, you know, like I said, it hadn't been used or anything. It was just kind of sitting in surplus, but sweet, sweet little breaker bar. Now, I really wish we could plug those on. I guess I do have this half inch, which is going to look terrible, but we're going to do it. This will be the uh, first time this has had a socket on it. Good Lord, that fitment's good. I swear, man, stuff just used to be so much better. <laughs> so, uh, you picture it, you know, you come in and... Like I said, 25 bucks for something. This is like a heirloom tool. I know it doesn't look that impressive. It's not got, you know, like triple mirror finished chrome or anything stupid like that. But it's just a freaking tool that does what it's supposed to do. And it's going to do that for a long, long time. Right here, if I zoom in on this, I want you to pay attention. Listen to this sweet, sweet sound of precision American machining. Oh, yeah. Love it. <laughs> <laughs> $24.95. I might buy another one of these, man. It's got a soft spot for this stuff. And what's cool here is uh, it's not like you're picking this up, you know, from a yard sale and it was used and left out in the rain or anything. It's just never been used. It's old and it looks bad, but it's never been used, which is evidence best. Man, that's positive retention. This is a cheapo Pittsburgh socket, by the way. That'd give you any idea how things are done. Look at that end, though. 
mint. Absolutely glorious. So, uh, this, man, I think these might be more unique, the Mopar sockets, but in terms of utility, like that, I'm going to use that thing. I want to clean it up. Like, I just want to hit it with some ballastal and see what it looks like. <laughs> right? In fact, I, what time is it? I don't know. Okay. I think I'm going to go spray this sucker down. Foot cramp. <laughs> Side note behind the scenes here. I uh, might just go ahead and spray this down and like wire brush that real quick just to get an idea of what this could clean up to you. Uh, I see nothing wrong with the uh, shaft here. I would just leave that as is, but like this kind of got like some, was probably sitting in cardboard dividers or like the wooden crate, you know, got wet or something. Gonna knock some of that crud off, but man, I'm mighty. Uh, let me get you this payoff here though. If I zoom in, part number at the top, S40. Armstrong classic logo right here between made and in USA you've got the Armstrong logo it's really difficult to see that but I, I promise it's the arm with the hammer and then right there you've got the high tinsel again there's a few pits and stuff here but man it's just a sweet sweet breaker bar so I'm gonna go clean this up we'll see how it looks and we will close out the video oh man I think the clock was like exactly four minutes I mean we didn't exactly spend a ton of time trying to make this better I didn't have to really uh, just that first rundown made a big difference just sort of brushed it uh, it would have helped if I would have remembered that I had cleaned some spark plugs two days ago before I used the little brush <laughs> But, uh, we'll start here on the dry side. We'll make this dramatic. Cleaned it up really nice. Obviously, there's some residual ballast over there. That'll kind of take care of itself. Didn't really change anything. It's just a good, solid mechanism that's nice and tight. Look at the difference on the shaft, though. Just got all that old dust and gunk off of there. Looks fan freaking tastic. Just a super, super nice satin finish, old school, if you will. And then the real payoff was here on the handle, which again, kind of, you can see the ballastal there on me. <laughs> so, it'll continue to clean up, I think, as we get some use on it. Um, I've kind of been thinking about picking up an ultrasonic cleaner. I have never in my life used one. None of the old guys I used to hang around with had used them either. Uh, if you've used one, I'm talking like a cheap one. Uh, let me know, and uh, let me know how it's worked for you, if you'd recommend it or not, because if it sucks, I don't really want to spend the money on it. But something like that, I think, would be where this might, like, get the greatest benefit. But most of that, like, cardboard, wood, whatever fibrous crud was kind of embedded in the knurling is gone. Parts of it look really good, then parts of it kind of, like, you see streaks of brown, you know, or something, but I think over time it'll kind of continue to wear out of there, but just a killer little deal. Could we improve this? Yes. How? 18 inches, <laughs> number one, and B, you hear me with this stuff all the time. I personally would prefer just, if it's not anything crazy, I'm not asking the handle to come up here or halfway to the neck, just like if we could get the handle a little bit past like the thumb landing spot, perfect. Uh, it is kind of okay as is because it necks down, but just if I had personal preference, I don't mind my thumb being on the knurling. In fact, it's confidence inspiring. But Armstrong S40 2495. They have quite a few of these if you're interested, at least as of me filming this. And they came in quite some time ago, so I don't think they're like a huge rush on them or anything. But uh, this backside here did clean up a little bit as well. <laughs> like. 1940 to 1945-ish, like, hey, you know, this, this is in pretty dadgum good shape. I guess World War II era, maybe we'd like bush it past that a little bit, you know, but uh, for a tool from the 1940 to 1950 timeline, I'd say it's pretty impressive. <laughs> so, uh, with that said, let me know your thoughts on all this stuff. What did we have just to recap? The glorious Armstrong S40 at the top of your screen. We got the funky offset from right if you know anything about the particulars there, uh, like I said, it does just seem like the 9 16 is a little bit more <laughs> of an angle. Uh, let me know your thoughts there. Same thing, if you can identify the manufacturer of these sockets or you happen to know, that would be awesome. We'll clean those up a little bit too. This one is just significantly lighter than the bigger one. Sometimes you have the thicker sidewall and the weight's not that noticeable. That is very noticeable uh, for two sockets of such similar size and stature. 
We showcased our satin finish. We showcased our black. I might put that video contrasting them in between. It's not a huge deal if you know we have those. The Bonnie half inch drive, 12 point. Like I said, super floppy there, but hey, this is what it is. That's a solid performer. We got our Lang pocket pry bars. Finally found those in stock for a good price. Uh, well, there's a couple others I've been trying to get for quite some time too. I'm not willing to spend and break the bank on something like that. So I just kind of wait for the deals to come to me. And uh, last but not least, of course, we've got this uh, Malco cleanable hex driver that's reversible with a magnet. And uh, like I said, that was kind of on the wish list for a while too. This seemed like a good length, sort of like an intermediary type of a thing. Uh, I think it'll come in quite handy. We'll stick with quarter and three eighths for now because that seems to be a little bit more common than five sixteenths for me. <laughs> it's uh, red and red and blue, if you will, not yellow. Conveniently, the size that I would use least is the one that we have two iterations of. Go figure. <laughs> so, past that, we also picked up like closeout prices on Knipex. Again, essentially think of these as KC Tools tool of the day pricing, right? So I feel like we did pretty good on that front there. Again, those will be going to work. Nothing needed here. Actually, I don't know that I have eight inch side cutters here, but they're going to work. I already decided just like we committed to the full polished rights, which are sitting over here shining in the corner. I need to get those back to work with me because I could have really used them today, especially the 15 16 but uh, hey, this is what it is. <laughs> so, uh, with that said, this is where we stand. This is what we brought in. Let me know your thoughts on all this stuff. Like I said, we've got another pretty cool item sitting right over here in a box. It's not, not making a lot of racket, but there's your, there's your teaser right there. That's all I'm going to give you. Uh, we're going to save that for the next one. I'll combine it with something. Realistically, we probably should have like saved a couple of these items for that, but whatever. <laughs> it's what it is. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed. Hopefully you learned a little something. Again, all this will be linked down below. And uh, like I said, on the half 9 16 deal, I'll just go ahead and link to the half, I guess, since that's what we have here. Uh, don't make a dime off of that. It's solely there for your convenience. Uh, there's no, like, kickback, no free shirts. I don't even get the free super secret decoder ring thing. So <laughs> this is just me finding things that I think have a good price on them, bringing them in and showing you what I brought and why. So uh, if anyone has jumped on the little Armstrong breaker bar, let me know what you're doing with it. Is it like such good shape? It's going in like some collectible collection uh, or is it an antique or display or a conversation piece or are you just using it? Uh, I'm curious to see there. I plan to use mine. Uh, it's a fantastic little piece. I'll show you the proto sometime. Uh, we'll maybe compare and contrast them, but uh, yeah. Any experience with the right offsets, let me know on that front as well. That said, it's about 10 o'clock and I still need to work out, so I'm going to run in and do that. I don't think there's storms coming, but that probably means there are. And it really sucks when you're as dirty as I am and you can't shower. Uh, you know, it's not my uh, preferred story, you know, like he died taking a shower due to a lightning strike, so... Uh, hopefully I can get in, get the workout done, shower, and uh, live to tell another tale and film another tool haul because we got part of it sitting over here. So, uh, With that said, really, really happy with this stuff. I think we got great prices on it all. Same thing if you've used the Malco stuff for a while, which I'm sure a lot of you have. Uh, let me know how you like it, if there's anything better, if it's like it's the bee's knees. Again, the whole concept there, I don't think I hit on like the main reason for that. It's not necessarily dual purpose, which it is. It's that you can easily clean the magnet. If you do any of this stuff, you know, especially with sheet metal screws, <laughs> just like me and the grade two stuff at work, you're gonna shred that. And what I mean by that is just shrapnel. You know, you put that on and it's not seated right, or you run it too long, or you're trying to back it out and it was shot in crooked, whatever it might be, that's just gonna create shavings. And where do shavings go? To the magnet. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, what happens when there's shavings on the magnet? You eventually can get yourself to a point where you can't like seat on a fastener properly. That's an extreme example. But it's one of those things, it's kind of a pain to sit there with a screwdriver or pocket pry bar and fish that stuff out. Run your finger in and get poked and get some more of it. Uh, you know, grab a paper clip or something from a work order and dig around with it. This just makes it super easy. You grab a blue shop rag or something, done. So that's the big selling point, at least to me, the dual drive, also nice. And like I said, I don't think they go larger than this. I would love to see that happen. I would be a purchaser of a half 9 16 and a 7 16 half. But uh, let me know your thoughts on that. But uh, with that said, that's about it. So 
LoneStarMopars.com is the website. You can find us Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, all three at Lone Star Mopars. If you have not subscribed, I encourage you to do so. It's free, doesn't cost you a dime. If you ring the bell because you really like the videos, jump your charger across the creek. YouTube just might notify you. We've got new videos out Wednesday and Saturday, 9 a.m. Texas time. And uh, beyond that, all I can tell you is I hope you have yourself a fantastic weekend. Most importantly, I hope I catch you back here for more action from the shop.